Alrighty Hosses, welcome back to another video and let's go ahead and start learning how to create an overflow menu. Now an overflow menu is that menu in the top right corner with the three little dots that you click and it gives you some options. You guys have used them all before, you probably didn't know that it was called an overflow menu though. And if you don't have that toolbar at the top of your preview, then all you have to do is click this button right here and change the app theme to, I don't know, something like hollow light. That'll work. Actually, someone asked me how I got this icon right up here before. They actually asked me on my website. They thought like I loaded in an image or something and all I did was just chose a new theme and also material light. It's another good one. But as you can see, choose any of those and you're going to have that option to create an overflow menu in the top right corner with either three little dots or sometimes there are three little squares so whenever you click this a little menu is going to appear and for this example what I want to do is I'm just gonna have three items that say I don't know colors like red green or yellow I'll just pick three colors off the top of my head and whenever you click one of those choices it's gonna change the background of your app to that color so that's kind of the standard tutorial that everyone does whenever they're learning how to make these overflow menus. So I figured I might as well just stick with that. It's a really easy example. So the very first thing I want to do, of course, since this app is eventually going to be changing the background color, is we need a way to actually reference this. So let me just delete this first because it's annoying me. And if you guys want some text to look at, then I'll drop a large one in there that little one I don't know I just hate that little plain text for you for some reason anyways kinda of losing focus right here so we need a way to reference the background of this of course we can just use the relative layout because the layout is essentially the entire layout right now it's a pretty boring interface but whatever so we need to give an ID to this layout so name it anything you want I'm just gonna name mine main view hit enter and then later on in our Java code we can reference it through the ID boom simple enough so now that we got that out of the way let's go ahead and start actually creating the menu items now if you guys are like oh, okay this is gonna be a pain I'm gonna have to like go in here probably and import some stuff and type this long crappy stupid thing actually you are in luck because all of the functionality to create the overflow menu is built right in by default. Now if you go to your resources folder and go to this menu directory right here and expand it, double click this main menu.xml file. What this is, is the design for the overflow menu right here. Now by default it has one item in it, so we can just delete that. But actually before we do, I'll mention this. So of course, your menu can have either one item, five items, however many you want. Now each item that you add is going to be referenced by a new tag. So you can add, you know, one of these, then you would have one option, five of them, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to add like three or something, and I don't want this, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that, give myself some room to work with. Now another thing I want to mention is this, there are different types of overflow menus and actually you could see that whenever I deleted that item the overflow menu deleted because there's nothing in it right now but as soon as we add another item it'll display again anyways the different types of overflow menus you can have are dependent on what you want to do so if you're familiar with web design you can create something like a toggle effect or radio buttons so that only one of the options that can be can be selected and that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial. I'm going to create a group of three items and the user can only select one since the background can only be one color. So anytime you want to create this effect, what you do first is you need to take all of your items and add them under a single group. So group and if you hit Android checkable behavior and hit single, what this does is it essentially says, okay, I'm going to be throwing a bunch of items in here, but the user can only check one of them. Cool, simple enough. So now let's go ahead and actually add those items. So item 
and actually let me do it like this since we're going to be having a few attributes. So the first thing we need is an ID of each one because that way um, we're going to associate each item with an ID and a color and that way we can reference it so we know which color to use actually and everything isn't just all messed up. So I'm just going to um, what can I give my alright I'll just name it like menu red that'll probably be the easiest you actually only have to do this once then I can just copy and paste it alright so order in category this is essentially the order of how you want them to appear uh, show as action never want to do that so I'm gonna write never and the last thing you guys can probably guess what this is the title is the text that you want to display and of course we can either just type it in there like red but it's proper to have a reference to a string so I'm gonna write string red string and it's giving me an error because we didn't actually make that string in our XML file yet but we will in just one second actually I can do this save myself some time alright so now that we know how to create a menu item, let me just save us some time and just copy that, copy that, copy that. All right. So the first one is red. The second one will just have like green. And this is the second list item. And of course, our reference is that. And the third one would be, let's do yellow. And of course, this is the third item. And yellow. So right now, if we were to run this program, what would happen is, it's given us, we already know what that is, is we would have an option menu whenever we clicked it, and a little menu would appear. However, whenever we selected one of those choices, nothing would happen. So we have the design taken care of, but we don't have any functionality. So before we can actually start working in the code, we need to fix these little errors right here. So open up your strings file and check it out. So what did I name those? So red string. Is that string reference? And the value is pretty much the text that's going to appear on that menu. So I'm just going to write red for the first one. What colors did I have? Green and yellow. Green and yellow. Actually, when I, whenever I was like a teenager and I used to answer the phone, I always said yellow instead of hello. So, you know, that's a pretty stupid story. <laughs> all right, so moving on. Um, all right, so now all of our errors errors it's kind of a hard word for me to say errors now all the error is taken care of so let's head over to the main activity Java the first thing we need to do since we are indeed changing the background of this is actually have the ability to reference it so Android widget relative layout so now we have access to the background essentially. Now, check this out. We actually don't even need to create any new methods right here because if we scroll down, this method right here on options item selected, what this does is it calls this method automatically whenever you select an item from this menu right here. So if you guys didn't know what it did before, you do now, that is the purpose of it. And I hate when I don't have that extra space right there. So anyways, delete all these comments because comments are stupid. And we're gonna add a little bit of code. We can actually delete everything from in here. Might as well just start brand new. So, all right, let me adjust so we know what's going on. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get a reference to that background right here. So relative layout, and what did I name it? Main underscore view 
main underscore view and set it equal to relative layouts find view by ID and r dot ID dot main view by the way if you watch my last tutorial um you saw that my autocomplete wasn't working it is now working again and I didn't do anything to change it so I wasn't really sure why it stopped working but it's working again so you know hallelujah alright so now we have a reference to the background now what we have to do is we need to say okay this method is obviously going to be called every time the user selects one of these options so therefore what we're going to do is we're going to test which item they selected was it either red green or yellow and then we set the background to that color so what I'm gonna do is the easy you can use a bunch of if statements if you want but the easiest way is to actually use a switch statement now the item and this is just what gets passed into us because so we didn't have to make our own variable or anything so this is a list item and what I want to do is I want to get the item ID now what this does is it returns if I can show you the ID right here so either menu red menu green if you selected the green menu yellow if you selected the yellow simple enough so now let's start coding the switch and some line numbers make it look good alright so in the case that they select r dot id dot menu red what do you want to happen well the first thing I want to do is this if that list item is already checked and actually since I'm only going to be writing one line I don't need to include brackets or anything but item set check equal to false else item set checked equal to true now after this and pretty much the main me of this is you take that main view and you set the background color to in this case it would be color dot red now of course since this is inside a function we eventually need to return something so we're just gonna return true to let it know that we handled that event and the cool thing about this is we can just copy it and paste it two more times alright so the first one was for red the second one is green I think so we need to change the background to green and the third one was yellow yellow <laughs> alright so essentially what this is gonna do is this method is gonna be called again every time the user selects one of the options from that overflow menu now whenever they do it's gonna pass in information about the item now what we are going to do through code is we're first going to check the ID of which item they selected if it's red then we're just gonna um, make the appropriate appropriate toggle functionality for the menu itself and then we change the background color to that appropriate color and return true um, pretty much to let Android know that we took care of the event and everything is working correctly now the last thing I actually want to do is I just want to add a default since this is indeed a switch statement and by default I'm just going to return super on option item selected item and all this does right here is it says it's essentially saying okay an option was selected and this is just because if none, none of this functionality hits then we obviously need to return something for the function so we don't get any errors or anything weird going on so again this is just a default functionality to make sure anything doesn't break so now everything actually looks good that's all we needed to do and I got my emulator running so let me go ahead and run this bad boy alright alright so let's see red okay okay good so far green okay the moment of truth 
Yellow? <laughs> oh, too stinking easy. It actually works. All right, so there you go. That is the basics of how to create an overflow menu. Thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say. So, uh, well, see you guys in the next video.